The MS doesn't affect me at all. I take part in everyday life like everyone else. In Germany, around 250,000 people live with MS. Multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory disease of the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord. MS is currently considered incurable. Conventional therapy usually includes immunosuppressive substances that are limited to delaying the progression of the disease. But for several years, there has been an alternative concept for regulating the immune system, the Coimbra protocol. It is mainly based on taking high doses of vitamin D and is practiced by doctors especially trained regarding this form of therapy. What are the experiences of patients that choose the Coimbra protocol as an alternative therapy for MS? What is the state of the art in research? I have been doing the Coimbra protocol therapy for five years now. This includes regular blood analysis, MRIs. It is necessary to have the kidneys checked. Ideally, an annual kidney ultrasound should be done and 24-hour urine check to see if everything is okay. In the five years that I have been doing this therapy, no value has ever been outside the reference range. Both my general doctor and my protocol doctor are very satisfied with the values. But doesn't this alternative therapy involve risks, since it's away from established forms of treatment? We'll now meet a medical doctor in Austria who suffers from MS himself. Dr. Heinzel is a team doctor in the Austrian Ski Association. As a medical doctor, you rely on an alternative treatment method. Isn't this in conflict with your professional ethics? When I investigated it scientifically and read studies, it was completely clear to me that vitamin D plays a huge role here. And what are your experiences with it? In the months before, I felt very bad. And the dizziness, fatigue, disorientation and balance problems improved in such a short time. That motivated me so much and I have to say it wasn't only vitamin D. I changed my entire lifestyle. I have followed an anti-inflammatory diet as much as possible and dealt with the nutrition topic. The vitamin D was simply an impetus and it gave me a degree of certainty. It's obvious that there are people with MS who made good experiences with the Coimbra protocol. So why aren't more patients using it? We are now in Seeheim, Jugendheim, with Britta Meyer Peveling and Christina Keening. As patients, they founded the non-profit organization Coimbra Protocol. It has made me crazy that there is a method it drove me crazy that there is a method that can relieve suffering, but no one knows about it. At the beginning, I was alone telling my story on social media. And later then, together with Britta, we came up with the idea of founding an organization so that we reach more people. The central goal of the non-profit organization is to enable scientific research on the Coimbra protocol. What are the next steps on this? The first big point is the ongoing study on high-dose vitamin D therapy at the Charité Clinic in Berlin, which will be finished in about three years. The next big point is the next study on the topic of the so-called gene expression under high doses of vitamin D, which will follow the first study. With all that, we will have achieved a lot for the patients, and then we will see how to further move on. And if we collect enough funding, we have the heartfelt desire to even set up a charitable foundation that can help patients in the long term, that could be financing therapy for people in need or providing individual care for sick people.
We still have a lot to do and are always hoping for a lot of support from people who are happy to give, people who feel compassionate as we do and say, hey, there is a solution that we have to tell the world. The results in the patient group are reliable and successful. However, far more people affected could benefit if the Coimbra protocol would be scientifically recognized and therefore the effectiveness and safety of the therapy is to be investigated. That's the task of Professor Paul, who we meet in Berlin at the Charité Clinic. He's researching the effects of high-dose vitamin D therapy on the course of multiple sclerosis patients in an observational study. We cannot prove its effectiveness, but we will probably be able to say something about the positive impact and possible side effects of the therapy in about one or two years. Where do you see the next requirement for research to make progress with the root cause-based treatment of autoimmune diseases? We will be able to finish the selecting of the patients by the end of summer. Then we will see them again after one or two years and perhaps a long time after that. We will have a look into the clinical courses of the patients, how they are doing, is it better or worse than one or two years ago, what does the MRI look like, did they remain stable or have they even improved? There are also tests on the retina and blood analysis that we carry out. Are there any changes over time? Have new complications or safety aspects arisen that could be used as warning signs? Signs showing that you may not want to use the therapy in certain cases? People who may have concomitant symptoms or are taking concomitant medications that could lead to interactions? We will look at all of this. And then, we hope, but that currently depends on the funding situation, that we can examine blood samples with appropriate experts who know a lot about vitamin D and its effect on metabolism and the overall immune system. We not only want to investigate whether there is a clinical effect or an effect on the MRI, but we also want to investigate what effect these very high doses of vitamin D have on the immune system. These are very expensive and complex tests for which the blood samples must be processed specifically and analyzed in specialized laboratories. We are currently looking for financing and then that would be our next step. Patients and certified protocol doctors have been experiencing for years how successful high-dose vitamin D therapy is in practical use. Now science has to catch up in researching how exactly the Coimbra protocol works and why. Studies are expensive and must be initiated. The observational study at the Charité Clinic shows that this is possible, financed by donations and the support of a patient association. Back with Silke Schönauer. She has just come from an MRI examination and has good news. Her MS disease has not developed in any further areas of inflammation. That was my annual checkup MRI and my fifth MRI since I've been doing this therapy. It looks very good. The pictures show that the findings are consistent and that has been the case in the last few years. No new lesions have appeared. That's a very nice result for me because it means that the MS has come to a remission and I practically hold the disease at bay. Yes, and what about Dr. Heinzel? We meet him jogging along the Danube River. How are you today and how do you see the future? My life today is beautiful. I can do anything. I can do anything athletically. I can do anything with my children. I have zero restrictions and I'm playing tennis again. Maybe not the same level as in the past since my fine motor skills are not the same as before. But I can do my job and so I'm doing very well. Sehr gut.